of these cells have the LDL receptor and uh, what's going to happen is this whole thing is going to um, be taken up into the cell so a very large component of it is cholesterol and cholesterol if you can imagine cholesterol is part of um, membranes right so plasma membrane and any of the um, organelles, membrane bound organelles. So you can't just have cholesterol in your cell because that's going to uh, interfere with the membrane fluidity. So they want to, so when it enters the cell, um, they're going to store the cholesterol for later use. So it's going to be stored in a form that's more hydrophobic, so it's kind of kept as a little blob somewhere else in the cell so that it's not going to interfere with the membranes. So, you want to turn cholesterol into cholesterol esters. Oh no, I think it's... Okay. So cholesterol is going to get turned into cholesterol esters. And recall cholesterol ester has this... Oh, Right, and that's the rest of it. So it has this structure, it's a lot more hydrophobic. Cholesterol is just an OH attached at the end of many rings. So cholesterol, okay, so this is gonna be mediated by an enzyme called ACAT. So ACAT here is gonna um, convert cholesterol to cholesterol esterase. And this is also a couple more things that's gonna happen with cholesterol being present in the cell is um, if you guys recall the whole cholesterol synthesis pathway, right? So if you have a lot of cholesterol, you probably don't want to make more cholesterol. And then do you guys recall which enzyme is the highly regulated one in the reductase, right? HMG-CoA reductase. And do you want to activate that or in inhibit that, right? So you want to inhibit the HMG-CoA reductase because if you already have a lot of cholesterol, then you know you don't need to be getting more. So another thing that's going to happen is um, cholesterol is also going to downregulate the LDL receptors. The idea here is if you have a lot of cholesterol, then you don't need to take more cholesterol from your um, from the circulation. So you basically don't want to uptake any more cholesterol. So that's going to um, downregulate the LDL receptors. Okay, so is this pathway clear? So we just have <coughs> one more about the HDLs. So we already talked about the chylomicron story. We talked about the VLDLs. So the last one we're gonna talk about the HDLs. Are there any questions? Is LCAT and ACAT the same thing? No, they're are different enzymes. They um they kind of do a similar re uh, reaction, but they are located in very different places. So ACAT is, you know, like here it's in most cells on your in your body. So they're in the cells. And the LCATs are um, on the HDLs. So they're different location, but catalyzing very similar reaction. Yeah. Are there any other questions? OK. So the last one we're going to talk about is the HDLs. So everyone always talk about how HDL is good for you, good cholesterol. So basically we're kind of go over why that might be a good thing for you. Okay, so HDLs in the beginning is also made in the liver. And I think um, there's some made in intestine as well, but mostly in the liver. So most of them are coming from the liver. And then when it's first made, it's considered nascent 
Nason HDL or it's called a discoid and it also has a very distinctive apoprotein on it um, so basically everything kind of started off with a very distinct apoprotein so this one is an apo a i okay and this one also has a few um enzyme on it as well so let's see um it contains this lcat lcat catalyzes very similar reaction that we'll talk about later and it has c TP. So these two are um, enzymes or transferases that will do so, some reactions. And somehow it has APO uh, E or APO C on it as well. As to exactly where it comes from, not exactly clear, but they do have that. So what this nascent HDL will do is um, it can go to the periphery and if there's cholesterol that is you know kind of given up by the different cells so peripheral tissue maybe it doesn't want some cholesterol so has some cholesterol it can be given to the HDLs and and now the HDLs will have more cholesterol, so this is an HDL. And, oh, sorry. and the cholesterol um, is going to be put more into the interior of the HDL, like the HDL. So the cholesterols are not going to be all stuck on the surfaces. They're going to be um, kind of internalized, and they're going to... So to do that, it will be converted into the cholesterol esters. So, and that's catalyzed by the enzyme LCAP. Okay, so LCAT will do the reaction where the cholesterol becomes a cholesterol esters and this is um, LCAT is attached to like the surface of HDLs so this is kind of occurring on the inside of and then this is considered a HDL 3 the LCAT protein doesn't activate by itself, it just it doesn't just continuously go. It needs the APO A1. So that's the reason why when um, when it was made it contained a APO A1. So APO A1 needs to activate the LCAT. Oh yeah, APO A1. Okay. So that activates the LCAT, which is why it has the LCAT in the first place because it is needed to activate the LCAT to do that conversion. Okay, so as the HDLs get bigger and bigger, it's going to have more cholesterol esters. So now it's going to reach a step where it has more cholesterol. I draw it bigger. It's going to have a lot more cholesterol esters. Just not enough space here to draw everything. Okay. And then it's still going to have some cholesterol. And this one is called HDL2. What's going to happen is the cholesterol esters are going to be given to the VLDLs. So, 
Sorry guys, I should have uh, maybe drawn something so that it's not so clustered. Okay, so the HDL here, in addition to giving the VLDL, the APO-C2 and the APO-E, it's now going to transfer the cholesterol esters to the VLDLs as well. And the VLDL, since it has a lot of triglycerides, it's going to transfer some triglycerides to the HDLs. And this reaction is mediated by the CETP that's also on the surface of the HDLs. So the CETP is cholesterol ester transfer protein, but it actually transfers all those neutral lipids. And I think by lipids, they probably mean like all the lipid soluble stuff. So it will transfer, it will give the cholesterol ester to the, HD, to the LDLs, and then it will take the triglycerides from the VLDLs and give it to the HDLs. Right, let me just so there's one more component here. So now you can imagine um, it's going to get more and more um, triglycerides. And what's going to happen is eventually it's going to transfer these triglycerides back to the liver. And liver has a hepatic, hepatic lipase. that's going to perform the same functions as the lipoprotein lipase and it's going to take up that uh, it's going to break down the triacylglycerides so that the liver can uptake the um, triacylglycerides and then after it's dropped off the triglycerides kind of becomes the HDL3 again so they kind of cycle and then rearrange the different components in the VLDLs and then it kind of takes up some cholesterol. So the reason why it's considered um, atheroprotective is so HDLs is considered atheroprotective. For these reasons. So, first of all, it's able to take cholesterol from the periphery. And it's able to um, take the triglycerides from the VLDLs and then give it to the liver. So, So it gives it to the liver. So for those reasons, it's considered um, atheroprotective. Are there any questions with this pathway? Do you want me to go over it again? I'll, I can draw it in a maybe empty page so that it's a little easier to see. No, I'm going to pause. I'm going to just sit for